All right, everyone. Hello and welcome for my last presentation of IBC 2015. My name is Jason Levine, and I am the principal worldwide evangelist for Adobe Creative Cloud. And for the next, uh, bringing this back on time here, so about, about 18 minutes or so, I'll be talking to you about Adobe Character Animator, which is a new expressive animation tool that allows you to take Photoshop and Illustrator artwork and bring it to life. So what we're going to do is really go through kind of the process of how you set this up, how you use even existing Photoshop or Illustrator artwork that you may have. And by using really simple naming conventions, you can have your characters automatically rigged up and animating really in minutes. Um, it's very functional, it's very fast, very easy, and we can. what makes it expressive is that we have these behaviors which will allow you to add things even like particle systems, uh, 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 simulate breathing, dangling, sort of free-flowing limbs. You know, you still have a lot of the familiar tools that you probably know from After Effects things like the puppet pin, and really create something that's very organic and very alive, again, very, very quickly, very efficiently. So all of this is kind of based around working, again, with Photoshop or Illustrator artwork. And if you take a look here at the Puppet panel, the Puppet panel is nothing more than the Layers panel in Photoshop or Illustrator. And again, it's all based on these naming conventions. And if, essentially, you follow these rules, your character will be rigged up and ready to go. So we're looking at this Yeti character here. And if I were to simply uh, select our character and Command-E to bring into Photoshop, you can see our layers panel here, just as it appeared inside of Character Animator, again, with all the various elements named appropriately, already rigged up and ready to go. And any change that I make here, for instance, if I turned off the background and saved this and go back to Character Animator, the background, wait for it to incorporate those edits, the background will now be disabled. OK. So Basically now, let's go ahead and uh, I think I'll go back into Photoshop for a moment and we'll just turn the background layer back on, resave this, and talk about the animation here. What is Character Animator doing? Well, there's something new that's coming to it. I'm going to show you sort of the fundamentals that we released in June and then I'll show you a couple of the newer, cooler features here. Using your camera, your onboard camera and your onboard mic, this is going to allow you to basically first set a rest pose. So I turn on my camera and I'm going to look at my character. And what it's first going to do is follow uh, your position, your rotation, your scale, and all of the elements of my face, if you take a look here, <laughs> we won't make this too big, are being tracked in real time. So if you saw Carl's demo moments ago where he was talking about the face tracker in After Effects, this is in fact using that same face tracking technology. If I raise my eyebrows, if I blink my eyes, and even if I move my mouth, because we are also doing real-time audio analysis, and we have you, based on, again, some rules that we want you to follow, you can draw 12 different mouth shapes, including neutral, smile, and surprised, will give you all of the mouth movements that you need to give you the perfect lip sync. Now, because we are in an environment where the ambient noise is approximately 80 dB, this isn't exactly reacting perfectly to my speech but I think you get the idea. This quickly, instantly, will allow you to create a lip sync character. And if you've tried to do this in After Effects, this is a pretty long, daunting task, but this is doing it really automatically very quickly. Now, I mentioned the elements that you can add to your character to make it more expressive, behaviors. So Carl was showing moments ago one of the breathing behaviors. So let's take a look at those. So if I come over here to my puppet panel and I go down over, over behaviors, you can see the list of them that we have. So we're going to use breath. Cycle layers. Now, this is a great one. So let's say that you've got an animation, and you've seen this before, where you know, the background might be cycling behind them. They're running, and it's just this frame that you kind of want to go around and around and around. You can enable that via cycle layers. Dangle, I mentioned earlier. Face, your keyboard triggers, which we're going to set some of those up as well. Particle systems, and I'm going to show you some of that. And the wiggler, which I think many of you know from After Effects. So let's go ahead and choose breathe. And you'll see right away that my Yeti starts breathing. If I twirl down the breathing behavior, now you have control. So I can increase the maximum scale. He starts looking like a WWF wrestler, or WWF is kind of 80s, WWE. More a little more. <laughs> Dated myself there a little bit. Who remembers Big Lou Albano? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he was in that music video with Cyndi Lauper. Who remembers her? No, all right. 
So, um, and then we have breaths per minute. So it looks like he's just eaten a slightly smaller creature in the tundra there. So if we just go ahead and decrease this, we can calm him down. But you'll see that right away, he's looking very expressive. It's always a good idea to reset your rest pose so that your character follows you. And really, again, think about the movements that I'm doing just here. Just to do that in After Effects, it's a lot of animation. It would be a lot of keyframing. But Character Animator is doing all of this automatically based on those naming conventions. All right. So let's talk about a couple more. I mentioned particles. So here I have a character. His name is Finn. He is a pufferfish. So once again, I'll set my rest pose. Okay, and I'm just going to turn off the audio analysis for now. It's kind of messy with all the background noise. And once again, if I twirl down my layers here, we've got our head, our mouth, all the various mouth shapes. And then we have something here called the bubble particle. That's this bubble that you see right here, because this character has a sub-puppet, which is the particle there, the bubble. And what we want to do is add a particle system so that as he's in the water floating through, when he opens his mouth, bubbles float in the water. So again, go up to Properties. Let's go ahead and we'll select our bubble particle layer. Particles. Let's go to Prepare the Scene. Reset my rest pose. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is disable this static bubble that was drawn on the character. I don't want to see that one. That's just the origin point, right? So we have a function here called emitter opacity. Let's go ahead and drop that down, and you'll see that initial bubble goes away. Under particle mode, you have three options here, snow, point, and shoot, and cannon. I'm going to choose cannon. And then I can adjust particles per second. Let's start maybe around four, and I'll turn on continuous mode. So now, as I'm moving and floating, those bubbles are moving and floating. You get the idea. And you can really start creating something that's, again, very organic, very cool, very expressive. This can also be very annoying, so we're going to turn those off right now. So we have fins, and we have this spike. And if I were a fish in the water, as I move around, you'd probably see my fins and my spike wiggling or dangling. And this is the dangle behavior. This is probably one of the most fun ones to demonstrate because it really does look very cool, very organic. So once again, I'll just reset my rest pose. Make sure he's working there. And we have a dangle applied. So if I go ahead and I adjust this spring stiffness, now if I go a little too far with this, you'll see that his... <laughs> His fins and his spikes start to kind of flop a little too much, OK? But you can see it's starting to look a bit more organic. Now, this is a preview beta, so the motion would normally be a little bit smoother. But I think you get the idea. It's, oh, there you go. When I kind of do that, it continues to wiggle, right? You can see it. So again, we can adjust here. Wind strength, maybe he's getting a little, oh, that's a little too much. <laughs> you go a little crazy with that. In any case. Let's talk about actually animating and doing something with this, because this is Character Animator. So let's animate something. So I actually have a scene with two characters here. And um, this is going to leverage some of our keyboard shortcuts. Now, keyboard shortcuts can be triggered to initiate visible or invisible layers instantly with a shortcut. So like on this fish, this is in fact, he is a puffer fish. And the way I had him set up is that with shortcut key Z, I can have him puff up at any time. You have to make that sound when you do that. Now, on this particular scene here, we have two puppets, Frida and Flacco. And I'm going to record a couple of different things with Frida and Flacco. Now, Flacco, if I select him here, just to kind of show you very quickly, I have a couple of keyboard shortcuts set up for him. He can turn to the right. He can turn to the left. He can also whistle. Because the whistle is not part of your standard mouth shape. So that's a separate layer that's drawn and triggered from a keyboard shortcut. We also are introducing touch-enabled animation capabilities for character animators. So um, if you have a Microsoft Surface Pro, Apple Trackpad, or Windows 8 tablet, you can use your fingers and gestures to actually animate things where we have, you'll see here, we call this the dragger tool. We have that applied to his hands. So I can pick up his hands and have him do kinds of things like this. And all of this could be done with touch. And with two fingers, I could grab both of his arms and have them animate in real time very easily. Okay? 
But the first thing I want to do is actually animate Frida. This is our character, Frida Badu. And I recorded actually last night um, a whistling tune. I don't, we had some kind of whistle song on here. I didn't love it. As I mentioned yesterday, probably none of you know this, but you're actually looking at the Southwestern Regional Whistling Champion 1994 to 1999, right here. Thank you. I'm totally kidding, that's untrue. I am a fantastic whistler, however. So I recorded a little whistle pass. Uh, <laughs> Again, it's so funny because she's smiling just like me right now. I recorded a whistle pass last night, and I want to animate Frida whistling. But it's not just any whistle. I was kind of in this Ennio Morricone kind of mood. So it's this Western theme. This is actually a song of my own. It's called The Evangelist Theme, written in 2005, soon to be available on iTunes. And the very cool thing about Character Animator and the way that it records your animation is that it actually works very much like multi-track recording audio where all of the properties, all of the elements that you have enabled on your character, so the dragger, keyboard triggers, uh, again, the face tracking, lip sync, so this would be, I'm not doing any audio on Frida, I've disabled those. Those will all be captured as different tracks, as different layers, and you can record multiple takes of individual parameters or multiple parameters, and then you can choose the best parts of those takes to get the best animation. So it's really actually a very effective, easy way uh, to record. But in this case, Frida also is set up so that she too can whistle. So I'm going to quickly do a little whistle pass like this and maybe have her kind of sway a little bit too. So here we go. Turn this up so I can hear it. Let's check it out. Okay, so now we have Frida doing that. Now I want to bring Flacco in to sort of harmonize and follow her. And once again, with this twirl down, you can see all of the various parameters tracked and their takes in the timeline here. So again, I could do another pass. I could just do the wiggle. I could just do the mouth if I didn't quite catch it properly. I can even do a, uh, a very speed recording. So let's say for Flacco, I want to kind of slow this down because I want him to, uh, he's actually going to, again, follow her. Maybe that was a little fast for me. And I want to make sure that I have the lip sync enabled for him because we are going to record audio. Now, again, it's pretty loud here, so I don't know how well this is going to work, but we'll see right now. Let me set my rest pose. And this is where the expression, I have to wet my whistle, comes from. <laughs> I have to wet my whistle. Okay. Spaghetti Western fans? Yeah, thank you, Adobe employee. No, okay, oh, you said in the back. Okay, that's fine. All right, so here we go. <laughs> Flacco is enabled, scene is enabled. I inadvertently erased Frida somehow because we're live on stage. That's fine. So once again, I can roll back. I can just do a very quick pass on Frida, but you get the idea. So I'm gonna do just a very quick one here with her whistling. I wish we had 5X. Okay, that's enough just to show you that we have the two passes happening now. We wind this back. You are seeing this in preview again. So this is preview three. Important to note, of course, that this was actually released as a preview in June. So this is yet another preview being revealed here today. Play this back very quickly. I wish we had 5X. <laughs> That's recording my audio there. Okay, so you can see both characters animating. So what do we do with this? I've made you all silent. 
file menu, export, scene, where we can export video or audio or both together. When you do that, it's going to create a ping sequence, which you can then import into After Effects. So let's go desktop. We'll go into my Flocko folder. We'll call this whatever that is. Click Save. And now it exports a, a ping sequence of my animation. It will also create a waveform of all the audio that was tracked there as well. Now, we've got about one minute to go, so I'm not going to let this finish. Thankfully, I already exported one for you earlier. Let that keep going, but show you how you import this into After Effects so that you can again continue to augment your animation. Let's go ahead and go up to our file menu under Scripts. New comp from Character Animator Recording. Go to our desktop. Flocko. There's the whistle. Oh, and it just finished. There we go. You choose the first ping file. It opens up the scene. There it is. We can see the two of them. If I hold down my Command key, I'm scrubbing my audio here. And just like that, using existing or new 2D or 3D Photoshop art, I can have a character that's rigged up. We also give you templates. So if you choose New Puppet in Photoshop, you can see that we already have a template puppet. All you have to do is replace these layers. They're already named. It's already rigged. And when you go back into Character Animator, that character is animating. So you can even replace individual elements. First, I might replace the head with my head and see how it looks. And then I can replace the arms or the body or the neck or the face or the eyes. Every time you go back and forth, it updates inside of Character Animator. It's great to see all of you. We'll see you next year at IBC. Thank you. Thank you very much.